Gentlemen, I am humbled and honored to be with you this morning um, because you are part of something that started over a decade ago. You are part of a movement that Steve Harvey has begun. His goal is a simple one. Use the resources that he has at his disposal to support young men and their families to develop into the young men that God put them on this earth to be. Now, each one of you is here on this earth to do something. And our goal is to help you to realize that. The way we do that is to have conversations with you about what it is that you want and how it is that you can get there. Success is not defined by how much money you make. It's how much of an impact you make. There are a lot of rich people who will not change the lives of anyone. And there are people who don't have a dollar to their name, who will have a long line at their funeral because there are so, so many people who support the work that they've done and the way they've lived their lives. Our goal here this morning is for you and me to have a conversation. This medium that we've found ourselves using more and more doesn't require or doesn't allow for a lecture. And thank God for that. I don't want to give you one, and I promise you don't want one. But what I do know is that it provides us with the opportunity to have a conversation about what is on your mind as young brothers. So what I want to do, if our producers can help, is unmute our um, participants. And I want to go around and ask them to introduce themselves and why it is that they've decided to participate in the Steve Harvey mentoring camp. Let's start with Derek Walker. Uh, I, I want to be a part of the Steve Harvey's mentoring camp because I know it's a great opportunity to become, I want to go to Morehouse College and I know that's as a scholarship and it, I know it's a great opportunity. And it's just, it's just good and all. What is the reason you want to go to Morehouse? Mr. Walker? Uh, I know it's a good interning program. Uh, not interning, engineering program there. I want to be a mechanical engineer. And just, I already know it's an amazing school. Just having that school, it, it just leads up to good, good, good jobs. Just having that school on your resume. It just leads up to good jobs and all. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Latonia, Georgia. Okay. So, the school, the schools that we run in, I'm a head of school. So we started charter schools in Connecticut and New York. And the school that we hire the most people from is Morehouse. So you're not wrong about that. Uh, who told you about the Steve Harvey mentoring camp? Uh, my mom met this guy named, um, that's my mentor now, Mr. Martin. He told me about it and he kind of like put me onto it. He kind of like got me into the group, kind of. Like, I I really didn't know about it until like probably like a, like two, a month ago or two months ago when he met my mom. He became my mentor. Just Excellent. Excellent. So if you know, there's so many stereotypes about young black men. What do you think people wouldn't know about you? just by looking at you? Uh, they wouldn't know that. I understand because I haven't had a haircut. I probably look like a, when I'm just in regular clothes, I probably look like a thug or something, you know, a black kid. I'm kind of big for my size or my age. I look kind of small, kind of big. So, you know, I probably look like a thug or criminal, they probably think, because, you know, I'm black. And I'm actually a good kid. I play basketball, play football. Uh, they wouldn't know I'm actually an AV student right now. They wouldn't know none of that. They would think I'm just a uh, regular old a bad black kid that don't know no good, you know. Well, I am really pleased to meet you, Mr. Walker. Uh, Mr. Coleman. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, Dr. Perry and everybody else watching. Uh, my name is William Coleman. I'm a rising senior at St. Paul's Principal School in Mobile, Alabama. Um, I came on here. Uh, first off, I was referred by my auntie and she told my mom about it. And then my mom told me about it. And then so at first I was like, no, no, no. So then I started uh, watching YouTube videos and I started seeing the things that I can get from the program and just how fun it is. Cause at first it wasn't supposed to be virtual. It was supposed to be um, in person, but COVID happened and just things switched, but still it's, it's fun so far. But um, I started to watch and get these different like ideas of how the camp is. And I was like, okay, this seems very interesting. So I came on here um, also because I'm the president of the Mobile Capital League. And I wanted to network with other guys and see just different, just different perspectives of people around the world and just get to meet other people. Mr. Coleman, if somebody were looking at you, what wouldn't they know about you? What they wouldn't know about me is my academic side. Um, I have 29 on ACT, 3.7 GPA. Um, what they wouldn't know about me is my athletic side. I'm a starting varsity player for my football team and shot put. And what they wouldn't know about me is that I love leadership and that I would help anybody who needs it or not even necessarily needed it. Anybody who, anybody who I see that could, that can go to the next level, even if they have the resources, I feel as though it's my job to, you know, help them or show them the way if that makes sense with the stuff that I have. Thank you so much, Mr. Coleman. Thank Ms. You. Pittman. Yes, Good sir. Good morning. I'm fantastic. How you doing, handsome? Doing good. Thank you. Good. Um, my name is Gavin Pittman. Um, I want to be a filmmaker in the future. Um, I have been starting out making my own little movie, short film. I enter film festivals and other things. Um, and the thing that turned me on was my film teacher came to me. He said, you need to do something else with your life other than, you know, filming. And then as I got older, I saw other people going to the camp and I was like, oh, that may be fun. He, and then on the last year, the last year he said, you need to go. And they sent me and I, ever since then I've been having fun with it. Excellent. Mr. Pittman, what is something that if people looked at you, they wouldn't know? That one day I will be somebody, you know, um, when you turn on the TV, you may see me up there. You may see me as a director or a producer. You may see my work. You may think that I'm just some old quirky kid that likes to laugh. No, I will be somebody in the future and right now. So I want to add a friendly amendment to your statement, Mr. Pittman. You already are somebody. You were born somebody, and no person can make that determination for you. It's already been written, son. So what you do for a living, mm -hmm. that's how some people will get to meet you. But you have been somebody long before you were even born. So never, ever, ever tie your accomplishments to an establishment of who you are. I'm gonna go to uh, Mr. Farrington. Good morning. Good morning, son. Oh, how you doing? Fantastic. It's a real pleasure to see you and meet you. You too. Um, my name is Makai Farrington, and I'm a rising 10th grader, and I go to Salem High School. And Salem High School, what are, state? What did you say? What state? Oh, uh, Georgia. Okay. I'm in Georgia. Uh, I'm in Congress. So, I, um, last summer, my mom told me about the camp, and I was just like, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I want to stay in the house. I want to do this, just play a game. But when I actually went, I got a good benefit from it because I, like, I just reunited back with my dad, and so, like, half, like, uh, for a period of time, he missed out, and so like I didn't really have a lot of male role models in my life. And when I went to the camp, it really taught me how to do stuff on my own, how to be successful on my own. So it, it was very good. 
when you say you recently reunited with your dad, one of the things I want to do is I want to thank you. You know, one of the challenges of navigating black manhood is making ourselves vulnerable. And vulnerability means showing a side of you that could make people think that they could clown you or, or make you feel weaker. And what most people do not understand is that the strongest man in the room is the one who is the most vulnerable. Uh, right. it, all of us can sit around, walk, uh, look balled up and, you know, put on these screw faces. And if, if you know a turtle, a turtle has a hard outer shell because there's nothing inside. It's just soft. It's dead without a shell. But the hardest animals tend to have fur. Just regular old skin with hair on it. So I have much respect for you for sharing that piece of your story. But thank you. I'm going to go to Mr. Weeks. Actually, wait one second. I'm going to go back. Uh, Brother Farrington, tell us what, some, what is something that people would not know about you if they just saw you. Okay. I want to be a fashion designer when I get older. If, that you want to be a fashion designer when you get older? Okay, that's what's up. Uh, Mr. Weeks. Yeah, come off mute, son. Thank you. We're going around introducing ourselves. I'm Dr. Steve Perry. I'm the head of schools at Capital Prep in uh, Connecticut and New York. You are. We can't hear you, son. Still no audio, son. I'm gonna let you work that out. We're gonna we ain't gonna we ain't gonna forget you. Keep going till you get it. Um I see we got some uh older gentlemen on who some brothers who came to help out. Uh let me start with Mr. Horn. Yes, uh I'm Isaiah Horn. I am a 2019 graduate of Morehouse College. Um, I've been working with the camp since I was 12. Uh, you that big smile that went on Mr. Walker's face? <laughs> uh, so I actually uh, met Nicholas at the camp. Um, had the uh, opportunity to do some work with Mr. Uh, with Dr. Perry as well. So yeah, I've just been working with the camp for a long time. Excellent, excellent. I'm gonna come to you, Reverend Young, in a second. I see a uh, young man in the red. I don't see a name. Uh, who do I have in the red? Quentin Clark. Mr. Clark. Sir. Thank you. Well, could you do us a uh, favor and introduce yourself? My name is Quentin. I'm a rising ninth grader. I was a freshman. And um, I was referred to this camp by one of my friend's mom. And it will help me out to become a man and um, like learn a little bit more manners and stuff like that. Okay. Ms. Clark, what makes you think you need to know more manners? Because to, I'm kind of stuck on manners, like table manners and um, speaking to people. I, I speak like, I don't speak right to people. I don't have like the right tone to speak to people. So. What do you mean? Like, I don't, I speak right to people, but it's hard to, it's hard to explain. Like, that's okay. I got time. I, I just don't speak in the right way. You sound like you're speaking just fine to me. So I'm trying to figure out what, what you're thinking you're not doing. Mm -hmm. Just some stuff, some stuff I need to work on. Okay. That's fair. I'll leave it there. I'm going to come back. Uh, well, we lost Caden. Uh, he said technical difficulties. We'll come back to him when he comes back up. Uh, Pastor. Yes, sir. How you doing? I'm blessed, sir. How are you? I'm having a time of my life, man. Yes. I believe I get yes. to wake up in my body every day. In yes, my sir. life, every day. Yes, sir. Uh, can you introduce yourself to our group? I'm going to come to you, Caden. I see you. Yes, sir. So my name is Nicholas Young, and as my my brother, my blood couldn't make a sticker. Isaiah said we met uh, at uh, Steve Harvey Mentoring Weekend, I think, in the year 
2011, and I, um, yeah. I'm blessed to say that I've graduated from Morehouse College in the class of 2017. Y'all just, just want Mr. Walker's face to just <laughs> all back to his ear. Y'all going to press this brother's teeth wide open. <laughs> you keep smiling. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Please keep smiling. Um, and uh, I just graduated from Princeton Theological Seminary uh, this year, and I will um, be graduating from Rutgers uh, as well next year, next May. So you just on a tour. You want to graduate from every college in the yes, country. Right? <laughs> next up, University of Michigan. I'm just going to make my way to the Midwest. Yes, Keep it going. I'm not mad at you, son. I'm super, super proud of you, man. I really am. What, what made you go into – uh divinity school yes that's uh, actually, just pause for a second you know as these things go there are a lot of cats who preach they never went to school for it yeah they have to but i'm just saying it is what it is why did you go to school to preach um i felt it was my responsibility uh and this this goes a lot to the camp um i feel that everyone who i met there were experts in whatever they did I yeah. felt that they all um, didn't just give us uh, an offering. They gave us a, a, a beautiful offering. And so I wanted to prepare myself to be able to uh, go before people and be the best that I could be. And so uh, I want to go as far as I can go as far as preparation. Thank you. That, that's a good segue back to Caden. Caden, I see you getting prepared back there. <laughs> right, let's take one more shot, brother. Uh, I'm Caden. I'm yeah, I had to fix the thing. Um, when most people first see me, some folks uh, thought I was a fight fighter. I'm not really a fighter. Um, I'm more of a tech geek. Like anything that goes does with tech, like I study it and I read a lot. What happened to your microphone, man? Uh, I'm I'm in North the Carolina. Tech status is in question right now. I'm just letting. <laughs> you know. I I uh, live in Atlanta, and I'm in North Carolina with my uh, older cousin because he was alone out here. He wanted me to come down. So I'm using this um, tablet that I, I didn't know the mic didn't work, so I had to fix it. I, I, I'll cut you a break on that. <laughs> what do you think you want to be when you get older? Uh, engineer or a computer programmer. The reason I ask the question that way, what is it that you think you want to be, is because – it ebbs and flows, man. There are very few people who know from the time they're children to the time they're adults what they want to be. Yeah. And the reason why I said, Mr. Pittman, you already are somebody is because it's easy to get caught up in the fact that that ebb and flow means that sometimes you're going to hit the mark and sometimes you're not. Sometimes yeah. things are going to go your way and then a lot of times they're not. And if you tie yeah. yourself to your accomplishments, then you inevitably are tying yourself to an albatross. Because you will ebb and flow. Things you will get fired like I have been fired. You will you will have failures on the job like I have had and will continue to have failures on the job. But when you know that you are somebody, when you know that you are because you are, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. You know that you are because you are, then what that does is it puts you in a position to always feel like you are somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll share with you a quick story. Before I um, was on CNN, um, they brought me to a meeting with some of the people who were in charge of the company, the CEO and all these other people. And I went into the room and they, uh, they asked me uh, if, if I wanted to work there. And I, I run schools, so that's really what I do. I mean, that's mm -hmm. my thing. Um, and so I had done some things on television. They liked the way it came out. They wanted to offer me a job. And so they asked me, would I leave my job uh, as the founder of a number of schools to come and stand and talk on TV like I'm doing right now? And I said, no, mm. sir, not. And so they said, well, um, this is how much we're going to pay you. I said, that's very nice. Thank you, but no thank you. And this room filled with just white men and me stopped. They looked at me. They laughed at first because they thought I was playing. But then I didn't laugh to, to reciprocate. And so the CEO of the company said, you're serious? Dead serious. 
And he looked at me and he said, you know what? It's a good thing that you know who you are. Because if you didn't, there would be somebody to tell you. And what that means is when you don't know who you are, there's always somebody to tell you who you are. Somebody will call you all sorts of names. They will call you out your name. They will speak you into existence, into the existence that they want you to have, not the existence that you are put on this earth to have. They will tell you, oh, you can't do this and you, you can't go to Morehouse because it costs too much money. You can't be a fashion designer because ain't nobody from here ever been a fashion designer. You, you can't be a filmmaker because it's never been done before. Mm -hmm. But when you know who you are, when you really know who you are, then it does not matter what anyone tells you. Right. Doesn't matter what anyone tells you. You will be who you, who you are put on this earth to be. And the reason why when uh, Pastor Young asked me how I'm doing, I said I'm li having the time of my life, is because I only got one life to live. Mm -hmm. I'm on this side of the dirt. Most people who've been born are on the other side of the dirt. It's just simple math. There are more dead people than there are living people. So I'm among a minority that I'm happy to be among. Yeah. I don't know what the other side is like. I hear some good stories about it, but I hear it doesn't go well for everybody. So as long as I'm on this side of the dirt, I'm having a time of my life, which means I'm on this earth to make the very, very best of myself and, and, and what I do. I, I want to take a second and, and come back. I want to not just reintroduce myself, but reintroduce why we're here. I'm Dr. Steve Perry. I'm the founder and head of schools at Capital Prep Schools. And the reason why we opened our own schools is because I'm not going to trust any other community to educate my children, period. I don't trust anybody with my kids. I'm that father. My sons, my oldest is 17, my youngest is 14. They could count on their hands how many times they stayed at somebody else's house. Same is true about education. I'm not putting my kids' education in anybody else's hands. So mm. I want you to understand that we're here to educate you and to learn from you. Uh, Mr. Walker, tell me what it is that grown people don't know that we need to know. What grown people don't know that y'all need to know? Uh-huh. Um, I feel like grown people need to know that, you know, kids are going to make mistakes, like, my mom, she thinks I'm perfect or something. I know I'm going to make mistakes. She needs to know that I'm going to make more mistakes, you know, because if I make one mistake, she gonna, she just spaz out on me. She goes off on me. I can't even like, – if I'm, if I'm outside later than, like, 8 o'clock or something, she'll go off. You need to be inside. You're going to be dancing. Just going off on me for no reason. It's just – she just needs to know I'm not going to be perfect. I – I need a little more space. I'm a, I just, you know, I need to be, I need a little more freedom from her sometimes. Okay. You want freedom. You want Juneteenth. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Farrington, what is that grown people don't know about what y'all are dealing with that we need to know? Hmm. Like, I know and come from my own problems. Like, some people could, you know, all right, so you know how people have social media and they try to compare themselves to this person, so they try to do everything they can to be like this person, and it might go to a disaster, and then they're like, oh, I wish I could have this, I wish I could have that. And there's no reason, it's sort of a depression type of thing, and it's just like, it leads to a whole nother dark place, so it's just... It's a lot. And also, I mean, most kids go to bullying, but I mean, at times it does get out of hand to where people end up committing suicide. That's one thing, too. Thank you. So has that ever happened to you? Where you tried to be like somebody you saw on, on uh, social media? No. I mean, I know people that have, but me, no. Okay. Okay. See my brother Jeezy. What's happening, man? Um, I see we had a, another young man join. I'm sorry, son. I can't see your name. Joshua Smoot. 
How we doing, Jeremiah. Mr. Smoot? Um, yes, I am Jeremiah Smoot, uh, rising fr freshman attending Mar House College. And it's, it's nice to meet you guys. I was having technical difficulties. That's why I'm here right now. But, um, yeah. Okay. One of the questions that I asked the young men, but I'm going to actually go to Reverend Young about this one. Reverend Young, when people see you, what don't they know? Mm. Uh, this this is a great question, uh, Doctor Doctor Perry. Uh, I can only imagine that when people look at me, they don't see that I um, I serve people on a day in and day out basis. I'm in hospital rooms. When I walk through the Walmart or I walk through the mall, I'm on the sidewalk. People don't see somebody who 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 prays with grandmothers and and uh, and is uh, with people when their children are born or or uh, or at funerals and holding hands. Uh, people don't see um, me in the classroom. Uh, people don't know I do research. People don't know I'm a volunteer fireman. They they don't see any of that. They just see um, a young black male. Yeah. The reason I asked you, uh, Pastor Young, that question is because when someone like Mr. Walker, who's in high school, answers that question, I think there's a part of him that thinks that once he gets somewhere, people are going to stop looking at him that way. Yeah. Oh, no. Never. Oh, no. Yeah, not, not at all. And um, I, I appreciated the way you said that he is somebody. When you woke up this morning, somebody, uh, my brother, um, uh, when when you woke up on this side of the green, this side of the Jordan, you woke up somebody with a chance to yeah. to 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 not only change the world, but to be exactly who you were created to be. Um, and uh, you know that's never going to stop. I, I get pulled over all the time. Uh, I, I with them, I could have a million degrees. I'm still going to get pulled over. I could do a million things in the world. I'm still going to be uh, profiled. Uh, unfortunately, um, but that doesn't take away the beauty that was that is within me. That doesn't take away my value. Um, yeah. it, it's ultimately not defined by what people see, but um, but who I am and who uh, my Creator made me to be. Speak well, you <laughs> So, Caden, you heard me ask everyone um, what it is that people see in them versus what it is that's there. I think. You mentioned that you're a tech geek, though your mic was whack. <laughs> um, I'm fucked. <laughs> I, I can't let it go, son. You, you just you know. But this, what I what I think is important is that you understand that what you like now may or may not be what you become, but who you are is the foundation of who you will be. Right. Um. What I tell my sons, um, Mr. Coleman, is I just want you to be good dudes. I want you to be the man that your mm -hmm. boy calls and says, can you help my sister move? And you ain't over there trying to holler at her. You just move her. You just right. And then you find out that she lives on the third floor and ain't no elevator. You got to move a couch because ain't no good way to hold a couch. You don't sit and complain. You don't, you don't make a big deal out of it. He doesn't owe you his next of kin. You just do it. Yeah, right. You, you sound to me, son, like you want to be a good dude. Like that's what you're working towards. Tell me what it yes, is sir. inside you that inspires you to be that at such a young age. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to go down the list. I'm going to just be honest with you. From, the, from when I was born, um, I never had a father figure in my life. Uh, well, not necessarily never had. He would come and dabble, man, sometimes. Uh, but he never was really there. I never really learned anything from him. Well, at least at first, I didn't think I learned anything. Um, <clears throat> later on down the line, I actually did learn something. Uh, but I never really got anything from a father figure. So it wasn't until I joined the Kappa League that I started to get a sense of, um, like, a fatherhood. Um, my mentor, Dr. Cunningham, Dr. Carl G. Cunningham, he was he was there. He really did help me find my way. And he taught me the things that I didn't know about being a man because my mom can't teach me everything. She can't teach you everything. Um, that happened. Also, I had a baby brother when I was in eighth grade um, and he passed and he was he was mentally challenged. 
And so what happened after, after just seeing like, you know, going to the doctors and hearing people say, oh, he won't be able to do this. Oh, he won't be able to do that. It just made me realize he's not the only person in the world that's like this. And I know how I felt about it. And I know I would not want anybody else to feel that way. So I was like, I'm going to make it my duty from here on out to try and change the way mentally challenged people are viewed or how, you know, I can't go and hang out with them because of this, or they can't sit at my table because of that. And I just, I just really didn't like my entire view changed after that. Um, let's see. It's, it's a lot of stuff, but I, just, I, you. we'll come back to you. I got my man Jeezy on. What up, though? Good morning. Good morning, fellas. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing, brother Steve? How you feeling? I'm having the time of my life, brother. I'm yeah, on the right. Talk, I see you talking that talk early this morning. I love it. I love it. Look, you <laughs> middle of the night. This is what I do. Last night we had our own Juneteenth. Um, I had some brothers come by the crib at, to ask my wife to leave, which ain't really easy to ask your wife to leave her own house. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. I just want to let you know a lot of negotiations went into that. I think I should have been uh, negotiating the Geneva settlement because. I got my wife to go out the house and just let men have time for men. And this is part of that. We're continuing down this road. Jeezy, one of the things I, I asked these young men, you heard me asking, when people see you, because now they see you ain't just seen, like you're known. When right. people see you, what don't they know about you? Mm. Um, that I'm well traveled, um, that I've lived and been a lot of places that you know you just don't go. Um, that I understand a lot of cultures. Um, that's on the, the the top end. Um, I don't think they know I, you know, I'm I'm very educated. Even though I dropped out of school in eighth grade and uh, got my GED while I was in a, a youth camp, um, I'm very educated. I just didn't have the time when I was younger because of my circumstances. I was trying to put my my sisters through school and take care of my mother. Um, and so, you know, I've been a man for a long time maybe since the age of 13. So I'm very responsible. You know, I'm on point. I'm on top of my game. Um, very ambitious, outgoing. Right. And always been that way. But it's just like when, when, when people see you, they look at the circumstances you come from and, you know, they automatically just draw, you know, that same picture. He, he's from the hood. He don't, he don't, you know, he he's a problem. And, 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 you know, I spent most of my life trying to fix other people's problems. You know that's that's who I am as a person at heart. Talk about that for a second. Mm. What you what do you mean by that? You you most of your life trying to fix other people's problems. Um, well, you know, just trying to take care of people. I've always been the breadwinner, one way or another. I've always been the mediator. I've always been the glue. I've always been the person that you can call. You know, when they say you got to call to check on your strong friend sometime to yeah. make sure he's okay. I'm that guy. I got you know my my, my range is from the top and 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 not to for bragging rights, but I know you know billionaires to guys are still standing on the block now. You know, and I talk to everybody still frequently to these days, and it's just like these these people from the top to the bottom still ask me for advice about life because that's what I understand. I had to learn that was my gift. My gift is I understand life. I understand adversity. And that's how I was able to, you know, maneuver my way through life. Because to me, it's like a game that I don't ever want to lose. So every day I get up, I I, I know I got to prepare for this video game. I know some of y'all probably play the, the the man or whatever, but that's how I live life. It's like I got to win today. I got to win again because that's that's what's going to keep me me. Not meaning that I have to gain something. Is I have to learn. I have to educate myself, and I got to be on point because I, I don't just have a single talent. I got into music. Because I I studied it, I learned it. I was like, wow, okay, I can do this. I'm living like this, and that's how I was able to get into it and then flip it to other things because that wasn't the end all be all for me. So I think the most part people don't understand about me is I'm one of them type of people that if you tell me I can't do it, I'm gonna do it three times and take a picture. That just that's 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 what gets me going. You know what I mean? That's my that's 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 my vice. That's my thing. You know, that's my high, if you will. So. I think they don't see that. They don't see me coming because a, a lot of times, brother Steve, people, I, I, I've got my way into Fortune 500 companies and, and, and made these people so much, um, you know, just so much bigger because I understand how to get from point A to Z because I had to learn that coming from the streets. And it's a simple line. 
You just walk it, mm-hmm. you walk it, you know, you, you walk it and you walk it straight and, 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 and you keep your head up and your chest out and you don't let nothing deter you because you got to get there and you, and you do it with integrity. And they don't, mm-hmm. they don't see that. And when they sit in the room and, and, and they propose all these things and you go, no, 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 it's simple. All we got to do is this. And they look at you and they go, how do you know that? And I said, because this is how we survive where I'm from. You know what I'm saying? So they don't get, they don't get what we're built with. And, and, and let me say this, like when I look at the greats, the Oprahs, the Tyler Perrys, the anybody you respect, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You got to understand you got everything in you that they had in them to, to, to get to where they at. You know, you got it. It's our gift. It, 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 by the way, it's a gift and a curse. Because like, like, like Reverend uh, Nicholas was saying, you know, it, it still comes with the territory now. I mean, I don't, I don't not get pulled over and get treated like I'm not Jeezy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But when I walk into a boardroom, you know, I get love because I, I, I got a track record of, of, of being, you know, determined. Like, no, we're going to get this done. And I, I, don't, I don't let things shift me because I learned coming from where I came from that if you let things shift you, you, you might lose the game. And the difference between us and them is if we lose, we lose in real life. You don't, you don't get a game over yeah. and, and then get, put another quarter in and get a start again. You know what I'm saying? It don't work like right. that for us. Right. You know? Yeah. Kill the on, the, on the quarter reference there, Jeezy. Right. Uh, so, uh, young man, I'm going to come to y'all in a second because I'm, I'm going to ask you to ask Jeezy some questions in a moment. But mm-hmm. the, uh, what was the prediction for you as an eighth grade dropout who was in a camp? Like, what, wow. How was this thing supposed to end? Well, let me tell you this. So we just mm-hmm. put, you, put you in perspective. My mother and my sister, my brother died when he was born. So that made, led me to be the oldest boy. My sister's very smart, always been smart, always will be smart. Um, it, it's, it's crazy. And my mother, um, and we lived in a single wide trailer that, was a, that I paid, that I actually got up on the money and paid $3,500 for the place that we lived in, cash it out. This was our trailer. If the wind blew, it would blow it down 10 times. It was that serious. And I, it, what was your customer question again? I'm, I'm painting a... You, you're going good. So right. where was your life supposed to end? Like- okay, got it. My, my life was supposed to end there. My grandmother, when we lived with my grandmother. We came up in a town. The, the, the population was, when my mother and father divorced, we moved back with my grandmother, which was a town right outside of Atlanta. And the population was 4,000. I was supposed to stay there. And I remember sitting on, sitting on my auntie's porch and looking at the mailbox. and like, how do I get past his mailbox? It's gonna be a lot of steps, and that was that was going on in my head every day. And everybody around me was kind of cool with the circumstances, and I was like, I ain't supposed to be here. I can't be here, and and I gotta figure this out for my mom and my sister. And then I just started making my moves, and they were so small, and I was supposed to be right there on that porch. Even when I go back to visit, I see how people look at me that that, that know me for real and know my heart and, and know what I put into this, and go, man, like like like. You was because I used to tell him, I'm like, yo, I'm gonna get out of here, I'm gonna be big, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And everybody, like, you know, like, you know, just put it this way, just to put it in perspective, not materialistic. But when they was thinking about, you know, Jordans as a shoe, I was trying to be Michael Jordan, and it ain't had to be basketball, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to be the guy. That's <laughs> right. One of the things that you just said that 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 moved me is the imagery of getting past. The, the, mail. the, the mailbox, yeah. Y'all got to understand. The difference between people who make it and people who don't are those who have what we lightly refer to as vision. Correct. They're, they're looking Correct. to go somewhere. Correct. Correct. And, and if, you, if you don't, that's the thing. See, I had to really realize that a lot of people that I came up with, they didn't have a vision. They, it, it was already set for them. Mm-hmm. I, I, I was born here. I grew up here. My daddy lived here. My mama lived here. My brother, he worked down the street at the McDonald's. He cool with that. You know, I'm going to get me a little job doing this. And I'm sitting there going, yo, you only got one, t- one chance to live this life. Like one mm-hmm. chance. And it's possible. And if I had to listen to everybody when I was passing out my CDs, and, and, and asking my uncles to support me and buy a CD that I pressed up with my hard-earned money, and he wouldn't give mm-hmm. me $5, you know, but then he'll go in the liquor store and buy, you know, a, a fifth of E&J, 
and, and drink and sit there with his friends, but you want to support your nephew. But like, don't get it wrong. Like when I go back home for the for the family functions, he see me pull up right now. I pull up in them big things and let him know. See, I made it on. You ain't believe in me, but I believe in right. me. Right. Right. And that's the thing, you know, you got to believe, like, like one thing that I pride myself on and I can have nothing tomorrow is that I believe in myself. Like, I know that if I set out to do something, I'm going to get it done. Now, how I get it done, that's something I got to figure out. But I know it's possible. And that's what keeps me going every day. Because once you know it's possible and you get a taste of it, you can't go backwards. Because if you do, you fail yourself. And the whole thing is just not to ever let yourself down. People are going to always try to tell you what you can't do based off their expectations. You know what I'm saying? What they think they can do. And that, that ain't your business. It has nothing to do with you. You got to worry about yourself. You got to do what you got to do for you. Because I, I, I tell you this, if I hadn't done what I'd done and being a true leader and, and stepping out and getting out of my comfort zone, my, my, my mother wouldn't be okay right now to this day. My sister would probably be in a, a bad circumstance. I would definitely be in the penitentiary or probably be in a, in a, in a, in a wooden box somewhere. And all my employees and the people that I've helped through my music, through my ventures, through my business deals that I've putting food on their table and, you know, make sure they was great for all these years. It wouldn't be none of that if I didn't get past that mailbox. So yeah. that's that. Mm -hmm. that's one, of, one of the things that Jeezy said there that I think is important for all y'all, all of us to hear it. When he was talking about pressing CDs, until y'all sold something on the street, I used to sell books on the street. Right. Until you actually been on a street, trying to holler at somebody walking in the other direction who wants nothing to do with what you're saying. When you can stop somebody in their tracks and say, can I just holler at you for a second? I got this thing that you've never you, that you didn't think about you wanted, that you didn't ask nobody for, that I want you to pay me money to put in your hand. Right. That, that requires a skill, a value that most people struggle with. Humility. Mm. Humility is one of the most important mm -hmm. values that you can have because humility is the root is the root word of, I mean, the humble is the root word, but it also can be morphed into humiliated. Right. When you humble yourself and you put yourself out there in a place where you know that almost no one believes in you. And I want y'all to understand this. There are very few people who believe in you. I wish I could tell you there were a lot. But there really are not a lot. Most, and it's not their fault because most people don't believe something that they do not see, cannot touch, cannot taste, cannot carry. And so when someone like Jeezy or, or Reverend Young or Mr. Horn, and they say that they want to be something and do something, even the people who love them the most, the bigger the dream, yes. the harder it is for people to... Right. Get, Yes, uh, right. the dream, the dream stillers is what they call them. Right. And so talk about, uh, Jeezy, talk about the humility and the humiliations because people, don't, right. right, they see you driving a big thing. Ain't nothing humiliating about driving something that everybody envies. Right. Mm. The road past the mailbox is really, really humbling. Right. Really. And you spend a lot of time getting played. Like if we're just going to call it what it is. Yeah. Well, well I'm going to tell you this. You know, off the top, like, nobody else is going to see your vision. You know, your, your friends are going to call you crazy. The people around you are going to take you out of your mind. The favorite uncle that you respect is going to be like, Neff, I just think you should just, you know, go, go get a get job at the post office. You know, and you're like, nah, I could do this. I'm going to do this. And that's what gave me my fire because I know there wasn't no turning back. And I know I didn't have a choice because I didn't have any other way. And talk about, the struggle, though. talk about yeah. those times when, when the food yeah. wasn't coming in, when the dough no, wasn't. No, it wasn't. I mean, I had to make a lot of real life decisions. Even when I jumped into music, I had to really make a decision. I had a way to feed myself and my family that was A1, day one. Like, it was good. But it was going to put me where I didn't want to go. So I had to turn turn my back on everything that I've, I've learned and I knew. And that was the scariest place I've ever been in my life because I was like, if this doesn't work, what, what do I sleep? What do I eat? And it's, it's been times where... I, and I ain't gonna lie, cause you, you know we, we brothers. I've been, uh, I've been in a great situation and made a decision, and and um it went backwards, and I had to move out of my house, 
and 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 my house of luxury <laughs> go back to 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 you know a uh, 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 a crib in the hood and sleep on air mattresses and eat ramen noodles and I told everybody that came with me we're gonna be straight but you know that was a hard time for people to look up to you because that's the thing when people look up to you when and when it's personal gain and when they see it go down mm-hmm. everybody don't want to stay on ship and I've been in so many situations where people jump ship. It's you. That's what I told you, Corey. <laughs> right. And it's That's just right. You. <laughs> right. And you just sitting there. <laughs> yeah, you sitting there. You like, oh man. And and it like, I I had to turn my pain into passion because I've been in situations where I've taken care of people for, you know, numerous years. And then the minute you tell them no, it don't go the way they want to go. They they uh-huh. out. They go. And then you uh-huh. start holding the bag. You know what I mean? So right. that really taught me to think for myself. And to understand what my vision is, and understand that everybody ain't gonna see it. But I'm, cause I ain't even front. Like I've been in situations where I had to make decisions. Like, you know, I I just can't get no clothes right now. And that was for mm-hmm. six, eight, ten, twelve months. I just can't. You know what I mean? So I gotta go around the homies with, you know, dirty Air Force Ones. But I got a vision though. I'm rich in my head. You know what I mean? I'm I'm rich in my heart. But mm-hmm. I I don't got it. What I'm, I can't. But then I cannot go because. You know, now, now I'm I'm not in the mix. I don't know what's going on, so I, I can't move forward if I'm, you know, isolate myself. Yeah. So to answer yeah. your question, it's just like it's been times, man. Like, you know, I I've, I've it's been times where I just had to sit and just get in my head and be like, yo, man, you're gonna be all right because I thought it was over. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I, but, <laughs> but stay there. You know, it, it's interesting because where you start shows the incline of the path that you got to go. Right. Um, You know, I was born into my family's third generation of poverty. I was living, I was in the projects until I was in my mid 20s, early 20s. And there I was a a, a year removed from public housing at an Ivy League graduate school, unable to afford food. Wow, that's deep. I couldn't, and I, we, I was in Philly. And I, they call, the public transportation is called SEPTA. It was a dollar 45. I did not have a dollar 45. But mm. I was in school with some of the wealthiest people on earth. Now, some people, that breaks them. You look at this other person, they just spending frivolously. You're like, well, I ain't never going to get that. But what Jeezy just right. is he turned that into passion paint my pain into passion right so when yeah. i'm looking at this dude eating and i mean eating i'm not there's no metaphor i'm talking about food people you say man you in really good shape no i just don't eat like i'm not <laughs> <laughs> no food like that you see abs but it's really ribs like right that's, that's right abs, right that's rib. and you know and and to go from a time when i when you could see my ribs to last night where I cooked nine racks of ribs in my double wide smoker for my brothers who just came to the crib because we just wanted to build, there's, it requires humility. You have to be able to get past that point where you deal through the humiliation of literally watching the man sit next to you and eat. And right. think, man, I remember <laughs> when I make it big, whatever big was going to be, I'm going to get a cheesesteak. There was no big dream. I was just wanted a cheesesteak, just the village. That's all. I want to be able to afford a $3.60 cheesesteak. I don't want you to think that, that any one of us all, had it all written out. Right. Just, that's not the way this thing well, and, and, and not to even, not even rig- had it all figured out, but that's okay. It's, it's okay not to just, to understand that you, you don't know everything about what you're about to do and you you gotta go you you got you gotta go with it you gotta go and and to be honest with you you gotta go with your heart you know what i'm saying you gotta go with yourself because ain't nobody else gonna hold your hand ain't nobody else gonna come ain't nobody coming to save you ain't nobody finna throw you no 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 package with everything you need in it it's just Mm -hmm. like you gotta make your own you gotta you gotta jump and you gotta know that you know you you don't need a parachute because you got you gotta make it you got right. to make it, you know, you don't, you don't have a choice. And that's the thing that I think we got to understand, like, you know, and, and what I've learned in my life is that if you take the time to understand something, it might take you a while to get there. Like, and he said, hum- humiliation, you know how many times I gave people CDs and they would laugh at me or some, how many times I've been outside of a club 
and trying to sell my CDs and somebody like, yo, man, come on, bro. What you, you know, it, it, like it was, it, I've been, it, by, by the way, I got one better for you. I've been in car with girls, you know, and she, she's like, who is that? And I'm like, oh, that's me. That's my, oh man, turn that off. You got that new, uh, uh, you know what I mean? You like, man, <laughs> you feel me? Like, that's like, uh, or, or you at a party and, 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 and everybody playing, you know, everything that's new that just came out. You standing right there. He's like, yo, why y'all won't support me? You know what I'm saying? And I believe in my dream. So I just had to keep pushing. But uh, to, to, to Dr. Perry's point, you know, nobody's going to come out of nowhere and save you. So you got to take whatever they give you and you got to make that t your, your rocket fuel, your jet fuel, because that's what you got. You got that. You got the fact that these people mm -hmm. are you know, making you feel a way. And it's just like, you take that and you turn that into determination. You turn that into like, okay, I get it. And I do, and by the way, just so we clear, I do that every day right now to this day. If I walk into a room and I feel like I'm not being respected the way I should be respected, I want his job. I want, I want everything he got. And next time mm -hmm. he see me, he got to respect me more. I don't care who he is. So like my whole thing is my grandma taught me treat, treat, be, treat people with respect and they treat you with respect. If they don't treat you with respect, right. go above and beyond to show them why they should respect you. And the right. thing I got when I walk in these boardrooms and they don't have, I got struggle. I got pain. You know what I'm saying? I, I got things it's so deep in me and still. And mm -hmm. nights that I seen getting up in the morning to get something out of the kitchen and not have to knock so many roaches off the cereal box, you wouldn't believe, brother. You have to mm -hmm. pull it out and just sit there and just sift through it and make sure you don't eat one. You know what I'm saying? So I got pain. And, and like I said, I can have nothing tomorrow and I still got that pain. And when I get up every morning, I go get it a thousand times, a million times over for the simple fact that I have pain. They don't got that. You know, that same guy he talking about sitting at the table eating good, he comfortable. I ain't never comfortable. I ain't comfortable today, tomorrow, the next day, none of that. I ain't comfortable until I can't move no more. You feel me? That's you know, it. I say, my, I, say my, I say to my sons, I wouldn't have liked you if I was little. I would have stole your bike. Right. <laughs> Y'all look too comfortable. And, and, you know, I asked each one of you at the beginning a, a question. I asked, what do people see when they see you? Mm -hmm. What many of you think is that that is somehow a, a, a problem, like that is a drawback. That is part of your superpower. Yeah. That, <clears throat> that thing that scares them gives you – that one step, if you're an athlete, you understand, you just, you need that one, you need that one step. People get knocked out in, in boxing and MMA because somebody just moved just one mm. just millisecond. Right. That moment of doubt that they have, that they don't know what to do with you, is your moment to shine. When yep. they look at you mm -hmm. and they don't see a volunteer firefighter, when they look at you and don't see a fashion eye, when they look at you and don't see somebody who's going to make you pass these roaches and pass, and pass this um, mailbox, that doubt makes them weaker. That right. makes them drop their hands. Right. Right. And when they drop their hands, that you chin shot. That's it. That's right. it. What mm. what so many people don't understand is that you think that the way that they internalize you, the way you should internalize yourself. I'm suggesting to you just the opposite. You know what they think about you, but they don't know who you are. And right. that's when they drop those hands. When they right. drop those hands, lights it's over. out. Right. It's over. Right. It's over. It's over. So they that's can't see, they can't see you coming, baby. They don't see you coming. Yes, sir. If um if I can, I live my life by the quote of the dream is only as real as the dreamer. So anything that you want in your life is only gonna manifest as much like as much as you make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Like as much as like this past year, I started a business, a clothing line, uh, a podcast, and I had no idea how to do any of it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I just knew for a fact that, like, because you because you count me out nine times out of ten, matter of fact, ten times out of ten, I'm going to do it regardless. And I'm going to do it because you really think I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? So, like, the dream is only as real as the dreamer. Like, it, anything I want in my life is only going to happen as real as I think I am. And it's, if I stand ten toes on it, then I'm going. it's going to happen regardless because, like, it came out of my mouth and it's going to happen. And I'm going to hustle hard enough to make it happen. There you so, go. Thank you for that. So, we have five minutes left. Well, I got five minutes left. Um... I want to uh, go with one of the young people who have a question for Jeezy to close us out. I have a question for Jeezy. Okay, Mr. Coleman. What's up, Will? What's going on, homie? What's up, what's up, what's up, Jeezy? How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Blessed, baby. Better than most. 
Um, what do you say to the people who don't have a vision but know they want to go somewhere or people who do have a vision but don't know where to start? Well, mm-hmm. pre- people that don't have a vision and don't know where to go. It's like hopping in the car your dreams with, with no map, no GPS, no 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 nothing. It's just like you hit a couple blocks and that's it. It's like being on a treadmill. You know, mm-hmm. you're, just, you're spinning your wheels. You don't, you, you don't know what you're doing. But people that have a dream and don't know where to go, I think they should take some time to 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 write out what they would like to see in their lives. Like what what what's the top you know fifty things you want out of life? You know what I mean? They don't all gotta be big. Right. They could be small. They could just be things. I mean, you might want to pay for your mom a crib. Like I bought my mother her her um her, her her her. I didn't spend any of my rap money until I bought my mother a house. But that was my dream. Right. And when mm. I walked in there, that's all I. I, that was that was what I wanted, but that was on my list. Right. I maybe had a hundred things, and I, I add to it daily. But you got to know what you yeah. want. You know, you got to know what you want, and 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 that's the difference between people. People who just want something, but if you know what you want, you know where to go. You know what to work towards. You know who to be around. You know how to empower yourself. You know relationships relationships you need to have to get there. Right. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. So, I want to. Uh, let, we have three minutes to the top. I won't let Jeezy close us out, but can you just join me giving a round of applause just for this brother? Oh, man. Appreciate you, fellas. Dr. Thank Perry you, is always real, man. Dr. Uh, yeah. Reverend Young, I see you. I see some familiar faces in. I just want to tell y'all, man, listen, if, if, if everything you see me doing is to show you it can be done. It's, it's, it's bigger than music to me. It's bigger than, you know, my, my role as a black man is to show you guys you can do whatever the you want to do at any time. Don't let nobody tell you different. You got that. That's your own right, baby. Do you. Live life. Live your live, live right. the best life you could possibly live because it's yours to do that. Thank y'all. All right. And y'all stay up, baby. Next time. All right. Dr. Perry, hit me up, baby. I'm here anytime. Love you, brother. I promise you. I promise you. I will. Sure.